We're live. We're Nationwide. Live. At least worldwide. Worldwide. And I might have slow, like, frame rate and crazy things because I had a computer dial me today. And Rob says, Big D, you should have known that because that thing's been dying for like five years. I think you were complaining about it dying since we started the first show. I think you're right. Yeah, probably. Well, this is the problem, my friends, with having a Dell computer. They last forever. This desktop is probably 10 years old. It still has an i7, so it's when they still had i7 processors, but it's like fourth generation. I think they're on like 13th generation now or something, so it's old. She be old. She be, but I be on the MacBook tonight, and I've got my second monitor. I hooked up the uh, camera. My frame rate may be a little off. If it is, I apologize, but hopefully we'll be showing much of this ugly face we're going to be showing some screen tonight we're going to be talking not about slamology because unfortunately neither one of us were able to go it's like you guys had a good time though except for the second day when you got rained out but we can talk about some amplifiers <laughs> what y'all think about Ampl that amplify i end it with an i amplifiers yeah so i don't think we've ever done topic on this hopefully we haven't if we have it's been many many episodes ago but it made me think about it earlier today because i'm working on a video for one of these in the list but i've done several of them what about these special edition amplifiers remember these from back in the day rob seems like everybody yeah. was coming out with something trying to throw some bling around well i'm gonna throw some major shade on phoenix gold Ooh. even though they had the coolest special editions they did but What's they the were shape? all just regular amps in a bigger chassis. Of Every course. single one of them. Yeah, That's man. all they were. Yeah. Hey, got to do what the peeps want. Yeah. I think it, I think um, RIP Larry Frederick, but I think he told us when we interviewed him uh, a couple of years ago that, you know, the reason they made the first Frank Amp, Frank, I can't talk, Frank Ampenstein was a request from a customer. So they had a large heat sink and they put the amps in and, all of a sudden, they said, "Hmm, maybe we should make a hundred of these." Yeah, the the Frank Ampenstein is probably the coolest Phoenix Gold uh, special edition, in my opinion. It's pretty cool, I have to say. I'm gonna try to share my screen here if I can figure out how to do it again. Let's see here. Add to stream. There you go. So there we go. The Frank Frank Ampenstein, 1992. This was a four channel amp and a two channel amp in the same. Heat sink. It also came with a active crossover as well. Seems like a lot of those are kind of gone these days. You don't really see the active crossover. But it was the MQ430, which is the four channel amp, and also the MS2125, which is the 2x125 amplifier. And that was, hey, that was cool. But then guess what? That wasn't the only one. They had another version called the Son of um, Frank Ampestein. Well, they AKA call it the sofa. The, the sofa. Yeah, the sofas. <laughs> if you ever see anybody say Phoenix Gold Sofa or Sofas, yeah, that's what it is. It's the son of Frank Ampenstein. And it used the same uh, 2125, but it used a two channel amp, the MS275, for the other side. So instead of having a four channel and a, and a two channel, it had two two channels, just a smaller one and a bigger one. And then, of course, we had the MS-1000, which is the big dog that had the two 2250s inside of it. And I don't know the deal about the nickel. I think there were not so many of the nickel-plated ones. That, you know that, that was the special, special edition was the nickel. Right. So there were even fewer of the nickel-plated ones uh, available. But that amp just looks slick. I mean, I don't, I don't know how good that picture comes across. but Those blue caps, in, man, they're, they're classics. They make it. I mean, the red, you know, power and ground wire and also the speaker wire that they use on the inside, they really, I don't know, they just really took it to a new level when it came to aesthetics. They just looked super, super sweet. But um, this one was rated 250 watts by 4 or 520 by 2. It says 520 by 4 here, but I think that's at 2 ohms. 1060 by 2. Now, I have tested the MS2250 
on my channel and it did i think it did around 1400 watts bridge oh so, did it yeah it's pretty powerful i don't remember that because i was thinking it was right around rated plus or minus 10 but i think it was a little more and you guys may know because i haven't watched it in a while so if you know let us know in the comments excuse me but um yeah we got plenty of other ones i just want to start off with the phoenix gold i know there's other models outside of the ms series as well um they had the what is it the bandit and the vc came in with a this is unrelated but you'll probably recognize this you remember when that game came out and it, they every single computer will it play crisis yes yeah. well, i remember uh, yeah uh, let's see. The Orion GS amps were the best limited or special edition amps, in my opinion. Actual gold plated amps. Come on. Yeah, they were they were pretty dope. I don't know who's got one today that's not peeling. Yeah, but I mean they're forty, what almost forty years old, so it's not unexpected, I guess. And if if we go into that, I would almost say it like if I was picking limited edition Orion amps. I might go either the Pink Floyd or the uh the uh what's his name? The hot rod guy had some made. Boyd. Yep, Boyd Coddington. The Boyd Customs. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's funny because I didn't put either one of those on the list. I knew I'm glad that you brought that up. I did put some Orions on the list, but not the two you mentioned. The Pink Floyd one, I know we've talked about that one quite a bit. And I don't remember. Do you remember how many of those were made? It was not very many. But you can't trust Orion. Here's the thing. Like, whenever they say you can't trust, you can't trust what well, they said. Well, what I meant by that is we haven't seen any. Oh, there's like, not. I haven't. Now. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen any in the last 10 years or so online. They're, um, they're super rare as far as that goes. Unless people just, you know, bought a stack of them and just have them hidden in their uh, attic. But it, um, it could be found. Could be. I, mean, Arn, I think Arn it five. was only a two forty GX. I think is what it, what that one was, right? It was a but it was, it was red. Amp. But it was like uh, HCCA red, yeah, or pink now. Uh, pink, because they never they didn't stay red that long. They do turn pink, mighty pink. <laughs> I know Mark remembers that one in the chat because uh, we've we've talked about that one before, and that one's super cool. Um, but. <laughs> And this is one that I went back on earlier today. Do you remember when we had the discussion with Mr. Bolin, the amplifier that he talked about? Do you remember the model number? Because I wrote it down so I could remember. It, oh, it was like See the... See if you uh, can get it right. It, it was the... Um, was it the the 2025 or the something close. like that? Very close. Yeah. So he called it the Orion... 22.5 HCCA. Right, yeah. He claims there was 10 of those made and they're still somewhere out there. I don't know if anybody in the chat has ever seen an Orion 22.5 HCCA, but I sure haven't. But it's possible. Who knows? They could be yeah. out there somewhere. That would be pretty cool. But the funny thing is I got kind of roped into listening to that podcast today when I was looking for, listen yeah. for that one segment and I, I kind of got... Yeah, I got trapped into listening yeah, to that I try, again. I try not to to think about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just erase it from my memory. That was a got him before I think even got him guy was. Uh... Dude, did I tell you I seen got him guy? Yeah, you I did. Told I it, you told me, but you yeah. So tell tell the audience here. All right, so I we were just in Vegas and uh, we went downtown check it out, you know, and uh, as we're strolling down, I see a dude and I was like. This looks like the Godin guy. And he's and you know, if you've ever been downtown or seen it, you know, there's like a lot of street performers and stuff. And people start taking pictures with him. And then I I swore I I didn't hear him like see him, hear him say it, but I swore I heard him say it. And I want dude, it was so loud. I wanted to, you know, pay, get my picture. I wanted him to do a got him yeah. with me. And then I was gonna send it to you to use in your video. Oh man, that would have been hilarious. I probably I should, owe that I guy some money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was there, man, on the strip. Man, I, it seems like I saw. Um, it wasn't a documentary, but it was a really short kind of documentary about him, and talked about how popular he got so quick, and then how he had a friend that took advantage of him or something. It was a pretty interesting story. 
but it's good to know that he's still, I mean, out there, you know, getting signatures, making money. Hey, that's good for him. Yeah. But yeah, Mark, um, thank you, sir. We appreciate the love. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We didn't uh, get a chance to see you at the old school, uh, meet. And I know some of you guys may be saying, what's he talking about? We'll, we'll get to that later in this episode to talk something about, uh, about that. But the other Ryan and somebody has already posted it. BB photo is posted the concept. Of course, those are ones that we think of as special editions. I think I have a picture here. I'll share if I can find it, but yeah, the here, this is actually a really cool picture. Let me, let me share it. I'm teasing you guys. It's really cool. You're going to love it. So it's the, concept and now here's the other interesting part so you know is it 97.3 is it 97-3 everything i've seen it's just 97 space three three yeah. <laughs> i always called it the 97.3 yeah because it, it really has no dot or no dash but i think yeah. you know most people kind of have assumed online that it is a dot or a dash and the one under it is the 97 one, one. right which is um now this has been a little confused with what's actually in the 97 one because it originally said it was a 250 SX and a 225 HCCA. I think some of the tech guys did some tests on the, the one side and said it's a 275 SX and a 225 HCCA. So it's not, it's, I always assumed it was a 150 R HCCA. It is, but the right. internals are the two amps or right. the equivalent yeah. of the two. Yeah, so yeah, it's, so it it's is. a one fifty R just concept color, yes, right? Concept color, and thank you, Mister Torres, for the super sticker. We do appreciate that. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously the Orion concept amps were, um, I don't know, man. They I, I posted a, a a quote on Facebook or a post on Facebook asking the question, you know, just trying to, I think every like year or so I post something and try to get information. And every time I get more information or I get deeper information or I get side chat that was never really mentioned, but you know, Jack Callie who had the Orion concept van with, I don't know, 16, I think of these concept amps in there. Um, he gave some more information about them and said some of them actually had 2250, uh, XTR 2250 boards. Some of them had 2100 hcca boards and that's the first time i'd heard that Hmm. i never heard that again you know we have to remember this is right about the time that a lot of the audio companies were having some financial issues you know the late 90s were times where people were trying to outsource to save money you know there were just a lot of financial issues going on in the industry so companies like orion were doing you know doing things like this and they were they were always doing some kind of a special amp or you know something that may have been done for a competitor or whatever that was not the norm but nowadays we just don't know when you get something like this are you getting one that was a former competitor's amplifier are you getting something that um you know was what everybody else expects it to be the 97 one i think is uh more rare than the 97 threes and the production, you know, whatever, the 150 fake number that we know, literally know people that have 30 of these. Right. So, right. but that, but the 97 one, on the other hand, those, those do seem more rare. And even more rare than that is probably the component sets. Yes. Yeah. And I, I've never held the component sets before, but I've heard that those are like crazy with how much aluminum they use in those and, and like the mounting yeah. rings and everything. Um, we had a picture before. I don't think I can get to it that easily, but it's the one that Sean uh, King posted that he had. He had the whole setup. All right, he had these yeah. amps. He had the crossover. He had the components. I think that was it. That was all the concept stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the EQ, the these amps, and the components. Yeah, so he had, had all that. And I think he sold it all as a bundle. But um, yeah, the components. I think somebody had some listed a while back for like eleven hundred bucks or something. And yeah. might have sold them at that price. I know our buddy Chris has some uh, new in box. So, oh, really? Yep. 
Dang. So That's I've, I've got to I've got to touch those. Wow. You drooled. You didn't like drip drool onto the speaker <laughs> kind of, did you? No. They're just ADS speakers. I know. That's well, what everyone forgets. But the crossovers are sick, dude. The crossovers are sick. Sick. Yeah, I mean, is it a single crossover or is it is it two different it's crossovers? It's a single. Single one that does all six channels. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mr. Koslick, thank you, sir. We appreciate, appreciate that. It. As always, you guys rock. This is um, this is really just a show we kind of threw together. Uh, I sent Rob a note earlier today. I'm like, look, man, you want to do a 12 volt talk tonight? He said, as long as I can finish eating my steaks. I had to cook them and then eat them. Yeah. <laughs> smoked out the whole house. Oh, you, you smoked out the house, not outside the house? Yeah. I, I use the uh, the little cast iron method. Oh. So. Oh, okay. All right. So let's see what's next up on the list. You got any other ideas of what it's going to be? You have any hints? Let's see. We done. Is it going to be the same brand? Because we've done Orion. We've done. Uh, there's got to be. All right, I'll go ahead and just show it because you can know. Kicker, it. You know is it going to be kicker? Yeah, yeah. Good guess. The Warhorse, and they didn't do are, many. They didn't no. do many special editions. So this is one of the few. And those who are in the chat who are at Slam Islands, you got to see one of these in person if you saw Andy's ride. And I think you all can agree that you have to see one of these in person. There's no yeah. pictures that, that give this amp justice. It is a massive, beastly size amplifier. And Andy is here. <laughs> <laughs> he's here. He's, he's up in the house. Well, and th this amp, so I'm curious, now that Andy has it hooked up, every one of these has a like a noise floor to them that I've ever heard hooked up. Yeah. It just kind of got a low hum. So I'm wondering if Andy's has that. Now it goes away. It, it It's un hearable once you actually start playing music but right you there is some kind of, of noise to them yeah i think that's um that is normal um when i first got mine i wasn't sure because the guy i bought it from you know i still got the box and everything the only thing i don't have is a remote so believe it or not and i, I still haven't got kicker to confirm this fully yet but i think it's the truth this ten thousand dollar amplifier did not come with the remote. Yeah. And it's a it it's specific remote to this amp. Some people have said the SX remote will work and according to Kicker that I've asked it will not work with this amp. So the remote for these is like super rare, I guess, cuz I've never seen one. I put a hunt out for one and I think Andy has been looking for one and we just can't find them. But uh, if anybody has one let me know cuz that would be cool to show it off. Yeah. The true question is, why didn't we run this on the 12th? That would that would have been smart, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that would have doubled the views, maybe, because the amp is so killer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so Andy's run his on his 15, I think. It was 18. 18 I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that 18, Andy, a D1 or a D2? We'll see. We'll let him reply. But um, anyway, this is a monster, monster amplifier in special edition. And I think we had asked Kicker before how many of those 10K war horses. And I think we were told originally they were going to make 5,000 of them, which I was like, 5,000, $10,000 amplifiers? What? <laughs> and supposedly they did like a run, and then I guess they weren't as popular as they had hoped they would be, so they didn't make as many as That's they many. originally intended to. But they're still, you know, they're not super prevalent. I mean, you see some online, but not all that many. He's got a D2, so that makes sense because these amps want to be at two ohms. And that's the right um, that's the right ohmage load. While you're looking up, I'm going to look up some, some uh, uh, special editions I'm thinking of. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Because yep. a lot of these you guys are going to remember and know because I've done videos on a lot of them. But the Crown A6000 GTI, this amp beside the Warhorse, I mean, they're together. They're really impressive together. I think the JBL is a little bit wider, but the Kicker Amp's a little bit longer. Um, but 
again, this is one, even the picture with me, I mean, I'm six foot four, but you, you just can't get an idea of how massive it is until you actually see it in person. All the aluminum that was utilized in that huge power transformer that's inside. You can see a bit of it there near the top of the amp. It's about the size of a, you know, CD-ROM or something, just huge. The JBL weighs, oh gosh, one of them weighs 87 pounds and one of them weighs 67. I can't, I think the JBL is the heavier one of the two, but somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. They're both pretty dang heavy. I would probably use threaded inserts to mount them and not wood screws. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. Uh, then you'd have to modify just in, the uh, just in case modif- you are wondering modify the amp holes to make it fit <laughs> yeah now that that jbl crown amp is is scary it's i feel like the war horse is much less scary than than the, the crown amp yeah the crown has that weird um noise it makes just as it's powered on it's kind of a weird hum to it but yeah. if you hook it up with the uh, fluorescent lights, it pulls over 12 amps of current at idle. If you don't hook up the fluorescent lamps, I think it's around 8 or so amps at idle. So, um, yeah, it's kind of funny because that fluorescent lamp reminds you of an old bathroom. You know, you walk in, you flip the light, and it would flash and just kind of zzz, zzz, and then finally come on. Yeah. The amp does the same thing. And a huge spark. Yep, and a huge spark because it's got to charge up all them capacitors. All right, as you're looking, I'm going to keep going. If anybody in the chat knows one that I missed, let me know. But I I did quite a few here. And, of course, this one. Now, this is the one that got away. (laughs) Good one, Jesse. Good one, Jesse. And you guys are going to know. There you go. Look at the timing. I mean, that's just, mm-hmm. and Rob clicked his, his comment, not me. So, yes, the 2500 F1 precision power, and this one is the one that got away, literally. Um, it was, on, I think it was April of this month, of this year. Um, this guy claimed that he found this in his attic. He moved into a house and he was cleaning it out and found this in the attic. It was number 21 out of. 35 or something not very many of these made yeah he posted he posted in reddit first and had some people and some one person at reddit mentioned me and he saves and contact me but he never did i went back through all my different social medias and i couldn't find anything from him but he ended up posting it on ebay for two thousand dollars or best offer oh dang he pulled it down the next day and put it up for 2500 or best offer (laughs) then it was gone yeah. Then two weeks later, Andy, Andy forty eight seventy nine <laughs> posts it for twenty five thousand dollars, and that was the original price, or was it twelve thousand five hundred? It kept going up. Remember, it started as one price, and it kept going up with every magazine cover. Yeah, or ma- every magazine ad, because I do remember it was in several. And the price just kept going up and up and up and up. I think it was. I think on the front cover. Of the car electronics, it was fifteen thousand fourteen nine ninety nine is what they had it listed at. Yeah, but yeah, so I, it's like something like this. I don't even care to keep it. I just would want to show it and like make a video and show people what it's all about since it's so rare. And then I don't, I don't care to keep it. But man, I just kind of, hmm, yeah, kind of sucks to miss that one. <laughs> this is one we've been talking about for a while, and and like nobody except for people overseas have, have even posted one that I've seen on any of the Facebook groups or whatever. Uh, no, I don't think you can make this amp for $150 in China. Um, you might make it look like it, but I think the components that were used in this thing were spare no expense, super high end. You know, you're not going to get, you're not going to have these amps put together for less than many, many thousands of dollars. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it was a special edition. They only made 35 of them. And hey, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. And I never, ever wanted that amp, ever. <laughs> well, I think it was it was like 99 or something, so it was kind of yeah. after a lot of the stuff we were into anyway. Well, and I, I was still in it, and I seen it, but I just, like, I never liked PPI, ever. So mm-hmm. the the ones I've used, and some of them are, are good and solid, 
Art series are okay. They look really awesome. The amps are just okay to me. The PPI stuff was pretty terrible, if you ask me. And then the precision power, they're hitting miss. Like the Pro Moss are pretty awesome. But, you know, it's just like the Terminator they made for MTX, the MTA, which is another yep. special edition that yep. is absolute trash. It's yeah. worth a lot of money. Tell, tell us what you think, Rob. <laughs> it's worth tell a lot of money, that. but it sucks. <laughs> um, let's see here. Bobby says the Zen 9. I actually didn't put that on my list, but the Zen 9 is one of the newer uh, Phoenix Gold Amps that is um, obviously a special edition. Um, I got the one from Dean, so I'm eventually going to show that one off on the channel. And... Uh, BB Photo says the Sony ES XM seventy five fifty seven. I don't know that I would that was consider, a high production model. Yeah, I don't know that I'd call that one a special edition, but it was a cool amp. I mean, don't it was a high wrong. end for for them for the Explode and the ES. It, it was it it was woefully underpowered on the subsection, which I think is what hurt it. Yeah, but I mean it it's a cool amp. Yeah, that was a dream amp for me for a long time. It was definitely a cool amp. I didn't know anything about them until I found one, and then I got one in. I was like, man, this thing is pretty sweet. The Arc Audio 25th anniversary, I'm not hip to those. Do you know anything about those, Rob? Are you talking about the SE? The 2150 SE? Those are pretty know. legendary, if that's what he's talking about. But it, it could I could be talking about a different one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Some of those dealer-specific things, you know, they just aren't available everywhere. They just fall off my radar um let's see what else let's see has anybody else posted i've got some more so i'll keep looking um i know you're looking for some too this yeah, is I've, another one that i've that i've posted that you guys have seen before but again to show kind of the size that's the, oh, the audio one. the com one yeah check out the center of that thing i mean i've done the video i think i did two videos on it but it's got that what third octave um, EQ in the middle, two channels. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a six channel amp. And now I can't. Do you remember. remember the Sony that had the big crossover in the middle? Uh, that was JDR their, had one. Yes, the XMC six thousand or something like that. It yeah. was a big. It was a big dog. Yeah, I didn't put that one on this list, but that's definitely one that, that you don't see many of. I don't know that it was a special edition, but it was definitely not one that wasn't high production. Right. But here's a different uh, picture of the COM1 to kind of give you an idea. That's a US Amps VLX200 at the bottom. So the VLX200 is 42 inches long, and you can see this MA Audio is that and a little bit more. And there's a CD in the middle. That gives you some idea. Also of the um, of the size. Did, like, did you not know that? I did, but I had an issue with um, with the I think the high the high power channels. One of them just didn't oh. work, so it needed two of the channels worked on. And here's another picture where you can see kind of the guts and see the inside. It's it's again pretty crazy. And you know, when I was looking up details on this, I couldn't find hardly anything online about it. And you know, the MA Audio, even doing going through the um, Wayback Machine and stuff like that, there was very little information. It was never, from what I could find, it was never listed in a magazine or never posted. You know, they didn't even have like a hot tip about it or something, which is kind of unusual. But this is a time when they were sending, giving all their money to Nicole. Remember? Yeah, she was I remember. Posting? Yeah. <laughs> it's like. You know, we don't care about our products. Just check her out. I mean, yeah, and she's that's how they. That's how the, all the cheap, all the cheap ones did. Yeah, so I'm anyway. gonna hit you with one real quick. Go ahead. Look at this. Now, this is not a special special edition, but it's. We'll see what you think. So they had the Nikki Six models and they had the Warren oh. G models. Of yes. these, yeah, I forgot. I forgot to even list those. Yeah, I still so, have those Nikki Six amps. I had some guy that was gonna buy both of them, but he backed out and just ghosted me. I'm like, man, these things are <laughs> pretty nice. I'm just gonna hold on to them till they're worth about a, a, a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Warren I don't... G ones I haven't seen as much. Well, of course, now, the, the Nikki Six one I hadn't seen much either until I found the two that I found. I, I think the Nikki Six were more common than the Warren G ones, but that's why I pulled up the Warren G. 
But now, uh, yeah. they had Warren G subs at the same time, didn't they? Right here. Yeah, but they never they never did they never did like speakers or anything else for Nikki Six. I don't think did they? Nope. They had the Just Warren the G amp. subs and and the amp. Yeah. And then on the same kind of thing, let's show the other one, which you're probably gonna recognize right off the bat. The West Coast Custom West Coast. Orions. Yeah. They also made subs with these. Mm-hmm. As you can and see right here. If I here. remember right, these were not like anything really special. They were just kind of like their generic ones with the fancy logo on them. Yep, just rebranded. Yeah, nothing nothing too too fancy. And here's one, I, I, of course, I forgot to put on the list, the Harrison Labs. Dragon. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a, definitely a good one. And... um yeah, I should. I mean, I it. would consider all Harrison Lab amps special editions because they're just not out there. Yeah. Well, remember when we when I first posted that when we got um, and the funny thing is it's hard to describe unless you see it in person, but it looks like a um, something that a the AC technician or an AC company would make because it's literally made out of that that same type of um, aluminum that they fold up mm -hmm. to to make the the blower units and when i posted the drag queen some dude posted a drag king do you remember that rob and we're no. like what the heck is that and supposedly it was it was like a double drag queen and it was even more power i don't even know 40,000 watts or whatever burst versus batteries. 20,000 yeah exactly yeah it's like where does that come from <laughs> and so I even sent a, a message to uh, to Harrison Labs, and they were like, "Yeah, I think we made two of the Drag Kings." So that one's like wow. completely unobtainium. And the guy who sent me the picture had two, so he had the only two ever made, apparently. Wow, that was kind of cool. Um, let's see, I got some more stuff. So let me let me pull back up some more here. These are a little bit. Well, this is not really obscure by any means, but. See if you guys know what it is. I know Rob's going to know it right off the bat. Oh, is that the, uh, it's the Odyssey something. It's the Odyssey. Thesis? No. Thesis Venti, yes. HV. Thesis Venti, okay. Yeah. So these are still available if you go online, go on eBay or go to, um, gosh, what is that site? It's one of the ones that sells on eBay a lot, but I think they have them listed for fifteen grand. And I think that's wow. what their retail price was is fifteen grand. If there's a really cool video on YouTube that shows the manufacturing process of these and how much of it is hand assembled and all how the components are chosen, the bad part is it's like two forty p resolution. It's horrible <laughs> resolution, but it is so cool to see the whole step, you know, of, or all the steps involved with how these are assembled. I've got one more uh, picture of that amp, which is actually even a cooler picture than that. That's do, you, do you like your thes thesis venti steamed ah, with milk or without? So funny. I prefer chocolate venti. <laughs> um, so this is one lit up, and I think this is probably one they did at like a CES or something. Yeah, but you can see it. it, and it literally has the plexi like that on the amp, so you can see, and it's got four different fans: two at the top, two at the bottom, and it's pretty rad. Yeah, we forgot to test that when you were here, Rob. Yeah, yeah, we should have checked it out. I, like, I that's an amp that I just never. I don't. I wouldn't want that amp. Yeah, I because for, for one, I'd never run it. For two, it's like it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's in, a lot to be held up in one amplifier, right. no doubt. I do have one, so I'm looking for this. If somebody can find this, let me know. This is a high market special edition. <laughs> Lightning Audio sold these in a package. You can get them both. This amp, the Subbox, and the Fast and Furious. They've also made them in yellow. Oh. If someone can find me the yellow version of that, I'll, new in box, I will pay you good money. Oh. I will there pay you... you Challenge. I don't know what I'd pay. I'd pay over five hundred bucks if you if they could find it new in box. Oh, that would be cool. The the first edition in yellow. It's it's because Rob just watched all those movies and <laughs> yeah, he's hyped dude. Up I, on Fast and Furious. I would have done it before anyways. I just <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker. No, that for is movie. cool. You're right. I haven't I haven't seen that. Um, uh, of course I haven't been looking for it, but I haven't seen 
it's any of those. So it must well, be. and someone posted them a while back. Someone listed it, a new inbox one on Facebook. And I tried to tra- trace it down, and it was already sold to somebody. Oh. And yeah. But if I found like a new Fast and the first edition, the yellow, I would pay very good money for that. That would be cool. Um, here's one I did not put in my list, and it is another really good one. Uh, True Technology, the Hammer, the Fairchild Edition. Yeah. Man, yeah, those are those are super cool. I don't know what the difference in the Fairchild Edition versus the other editions, but yeah, uh, I'll eventually get one of those in to to show it on YouTube because I've um, always been interested in those. Let's see. So some of the other ones that I have here, and this is not the best picture by any means. It's a little bit blurry. But do you remember Linear Power having some of those special um, mm-hmm. long heat sinks with multiple amplifiers? I think, if I read it right, this one was two 5,002s and one 2202 inside this heat sink. And it's about four feet long or so. And they, they've done many. They, they didn't even have a model number. Right. So they just this, made them as long as it would fit. Yeah, and this picture is so bad, I can't even see what model this is. I think it says 2202 on the end plate. It's hard to see it, but they um, they definitely did some special editions where they just you know fit whatever they could fit the board wise inside the amp. And I know and Ray's then, got some. He's got some pictures of some big ones that they built for people. Yeah, I bet so. Um, this other one, this next one here, I don't have a picture of the actual amp itself. But I have a picture of the generation. So Genesis, I think these are the Series 3 is what they're called. They made some, I don't even know how long some of the longest ones are, but I know some of them had like two of the um, DMX extremes and then like a four channel. Yeah. Some of them had like four DMXs. Some of them had, I don't even know all the different versions of them. Some of them were six channels or whatever, but those were pretty cool. And they're pretty, I think when I talked to Gordon about it, they they didn't make a whole lot of them. They made maybe a couple hundred total that were um, the special editions, but you just don't see them that much. I think Russell posted some up a while back that he was selling, uh, Russell Evans, which if you guys know who he is, he posted a lot of this really cool stuff. But um, those were, um, those are pretty cool too, so. Yeah. Well, and then there's one off. Oh, dude, you know what? I just opened one up. And I'm going to give him a little peek here. Because... Uh-oh. He's giving us a peek. How many people have heard of this? Oh, I know what that is. I bet many people on this this uh, YouTubes don't know what it is. I've never heard of this. Well, let's see. Let's see if anyone can come up with it. It's a Z Stat by Razor Zab 250, 500 watt amp. It says. Yeah, they don't. They don't even know what that's all about. I bet you. I didn't know. I didn't know what it's about. On the map. Yeah, we didn't know. This is a South Carolina thing, apparently. Yeah. Y'all about to find out because Rob's going to show it. That's going to find out. So I got something a little bit more mainstream here that you guys are going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. Obviously, the 25 to life Rockford yeah. amps. So the funny thing about this, Rob, and I don't know if you – were you in the car audio when these came out around 2005-ish? Nope. So not. I wasn't either, but a buddy of mine, in fact, the one who had the Punch 45, I think I told you about, that, that, that found the burst sheet and gave it back to me years later, like 20 years later, he messaged me and was telling me about these back in 2005. He's like, look, they're coming back out with a Punch 45. I'm like, no way. So then I see these, and then that's when I finally started kind of looking at eBay and some of the other stuff and got back into old school car audio a little bit more. But apparently these, when they came out, you know, they were the Punch 45, I think, was three ninety nine list price, and that's what Crutchfield was selling it for. And they even put the specs, 22.5 watts per channel, Mm-hmm. 45 watts, you know, two ohms or 90 watts bridge. And people are like, what? <laughs> Why are we going to spend $400 on this when you can get a class D, you know, whatever. So 
I don't think these sold well at all because a couple years after this, um, you could find these the Punch Forty Five brand new twenty five to life for like one hundred fifty bucks online. Of course, they were gray market; they weren't true, you know, dealers. Right. But uh, I don't. I just. I think it was a timing thing. I think it's kind of like now, if you come out with a class AB high current amp, people are really going to buy that. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as this. You know, it's it's cool as far as retro goes, but to be relevant now, other than buying it to collect or buying it to put on the shelf, I just don't think they were relevant. And people, nobody understood it who was still in car audio at the time, I don't think. No. Or very few oh, did. Just, just uh, maybe a thousand people will buy them, and that's it. The ones that know are like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Yeah, it's a very small market, so... For a company like Rockford, who, you know, they put a lot of, I'm sure they put a lot of time and effort and stuff into these. So it's um, it's pretty interesting to see. Now, here's another one that we forgot to mention. You know what that is. Well, that's the big Sony 2000 XM or yeah, something like that. XM yeah. 2000R. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was fun. And this is a good example of why I appreciated you guys driving from Arkansas and Texas a few years ago when you came because you had to bring stuff like this yeah. so that we could play around with because otherwise there's no way this would be shipped most likely unless it was in a crate or something or on a pallet. No, and I think I think when uh, th- this one got sold, it was hand-delivered to someone who was going to hand-deliver it to the next person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so. I don't... I don't doubt that because um, you really have to pack it super, super good to to not have an issue with shipping. Because you guys know, just even when you send, you know, virtually anything that's got some weight to it via shipping, it can easily get damaged. Let's see here, and I got. I don't know about the bazooka liquid cool. I know those are pretty rare, but what I will say that's rare that that Jesse has. Or Infinity Beta speakers and subwoofers. Oh yes, those are exceedingly rare. You don't see them hardly at all. And that uh, is they a were great reminder too, because I've got his Beta three hundred amplifier here that he sent to me because I was like, you know, we were going to make a video about it and and just show it off, but unfortunately it didn't work. Ah, uh, uh, I got to send it back to him. I think he's um, he's going to get it repaired, but. I never seen that other than in the crutch field. I never seen one. You never seen a beta digital three? I I bought when they went on clearance. So everyone that shopped crutch field waited for the clearance. I'm sure they did. That's what I did. I went into clearance. I bought the three hundred, the two hundred, and the one hundred. Oh. And the uh the green five channel Kappa. Oh, Kappa. Yeah, yeah. They had that one cheap too. Yeah, they had that one cheap too. So I couldn't buy them all at once, but I was buying one a month as I could afford it. And then I got them, never used them. Got that collector and, uh, bug even way back then. Yeah. Well, I got, <laughs> I used them like for, I would play around with them, but I never like dedicated an install to them. Uh, that was which, before YouTube days. So you couldn't write it off and play with it on a video. Right. Yeah. No, it's called it stupid cheap on eBay. Sucks. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, I missed somebody that said something here and it was Mark. Let's see. Let me scroll back up. I heard Infinity uh, Beta speakers in Southern only carried by two shops in each state. Hmm, that makes sense. Interesting. Um, here's the facts. The Punch 45, 25 to Life is a 200.2, whatever they call that year. It's the P-Series, but yeah, that's yeah. true. And the other ones, like the 75 and the 150, were also P-Series, which were the chrome. Um, I don't know if they were shrouded, but the chrome color amplifiers, they were kind of crazy looking, ugly yeah, looking to me amplifiers. But yeah, these were the same. They look like, uh, do you remember Flight of the Concords? Yes. They, they look like that spaceship. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do look a lot like that. Uh, so here's a picture. When you guys visited a few years ago, I didn't mention the Zapco, but there's a Zapco yeah. here. Um, also, and of course the rock, that thing, was a, that thing was a beast that Zapco. Yeah. So Zapco is here and it's funny how small it looks compared to these other amps, but I mean, all these amps are huge. Even the, the Soundstream MC 500 is massive. Yeah. So just to see all these together, it really doesn't put a good perspective on it, but yeah, that's the 
what was the zap code called? The four thousand. It's the nine nine K nine point oh K nine point oh K. Okay. So it's it's like a uh, incriminator audio the way it's stacked stacked up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that was um that was a pretty cool epic little layout there. I'm gonna have to do another one before I sell some more amplifiers because I got some more stuff to show off. All right, let's see. There was uh whoops, I meant. Yes, which one weighed the most? Probably that JBL, wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah, I think yeah. the JBL for sure. Let me remove this so I can get back here to what I was looking at. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Of course, with the twenty five to life, the one that they did not. Um, have a version of in any, any other model was of course the <clears throat> the power 1000 version yeah which had the led meter um, unfortunately these amps suffered from a problem the plastic that goes across the front which you can't see because it's underneath the plat uh, the metal panel here it's where you hook up the speakers and the power and ground and put your RCAs and everything, but there's a plastic um, trim piece that went across there, and those are horrible for breaking, and most yeah. of them did, and the ones that haven't broken are going to. It's just that plastic just was not – it's very brittle. And, and out of those 25 to life, this is my least favorite. I know what they're going for. They're going for the true Power 1000 look, but I don't know. I just think that the other ones look better. Yeah, I mean <sighs> – I don't know. I kind of I like them all, so I can't, yeah. I can't say. Oh, I'm not. Gonna, I'm find. not going to turn this one away. But yeah, if I'm choosing, it's hard to find this one. It's hard to tell in the picture, but it is chrome, um, chrome plated there on the top. But it is so hard to find one that's not all scratched the heck on the top yeah. because the chrome is not very good. It's not like the old Power One Thousands that you could, you know, throw around in a trunk with with. with um, Spare With tires and spare tires and tire irons and, <laughs> and all your clothes and, and whatever. Get scratched. Yeah. Easy get scratched easy, but um, yeah, that one's that one's pretty cool. Let's see, I've got. Thought I had another one. No, I think that's all I had on that list. Let me go back to my document and see if there's any I forgot. The and somebody posted in the chat about the arc audio and i think we missed it because it scrolled by a little bit too fast but i think he said they're on the website right now the 25 uh, year anniversary ones scroll back up and see if we can find them if you're still on about the arc audio if you could post that again because i don't see it in the in the chat so I'll, oh I'll... here's one go ahead do you remember lunar or Lunar, how'd you say it? Come on, I was like the biggest Lunar fan ever. Okay. Do yeah. you remember that they had a, an 8-channel amplifier? Mm -hmm. 60 by yeah. 8. Yep. $1,849 MSRP in 2001. Dude, Did you ever see Lunar... one? Or was that like an unobtainium just... I don't think I've seen one in person ever. But so the my story with Lunar is our store started carrying it. So I roll in, I see the 62, the L60X2. And uh, I'm like, ah, look at this little B amp. Then I look at the price, dude, get hit with sticker shock big time. It's like 500 bucks or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, that whatever. Like, I'm never going to get one of these. And then I picked some up used, and I've, I never bought one new, but the ones I collected over the years were all used, and they were really good amps. You still have any of those? No. No, I let them go. Yeah. Remember when I was in my phase, I was just clearing everything out that I'm not yeah. testing. Well, I'm not in that phase no more, but those got gone in that phase. The, I think Zapco had a 20. They had a 20K. Brad had one. Yes. He's got that picture of him with this, with the cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. He's sitting there with that thing <laughs> on his lap. It's huge. Uh, was it a two thousand or twenty uh, twenty thousand or twenty four thousand? It was m twenty or more. Yeah, it was a lot. I think it was twenty four thousand, but it was like sixteen volts or eighteen volts or something. It was, I don't know, it, whatever number they put on it. We can't verify it anyway because we don't have you know the equipment to test stuff that powerful. And I'm sure they knew that then, and everybody knows it now. Well, check it out. I'm going to show you one. These were pretty rare because they didn't they didn't go around. But I wanted a set of these uniplane mids mm -hmm. so bad back in the day. 
I would buy them now if I could find them, but I, the only ones I found were junk. They they were rotted out. So didn't they? The, they sold those in Crutchfield, or didn't? Yeah, they? yeah, they yeah. sold these in Crutchfield. These were either Italian or French. So I don't know which company made these. They, I mean, they could be made by Focal, but you know, yeah, or Focal, right. as some people say. Yeah, I think it's Focal. But I don't yeah. know because I, I I I have southern accents. So I may pronounce yeah. it wrong. Um, the Arc Audio CXLR. I would always get that wrong. I would always say CLXR because I'm dyslexic in that way. But twenty one fifty and twenty one hundred. What? Are, oh, I've got some Foos uh, Arc Audio amps. Mm-hmm. Those were special edition, I think. Yeah. So I've got a I've got a couple of those hidden away. This is one. Yeah, the acoustic. The big acoustic, yeah. yeah. They didn't make a whole lot of these because they were they were super expensive back then, too. I'll tell you, the all the Crunch high current and ultra high current amps. No, no, the Crunch CR600 is probably the most rare. Yeah. Out of the lot. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't, I don't, I mean, Zed got him back in the day, didn't he? Because, I mean, you yeah. could get a Zeus or you could get a Crunch or you could get an Autotech. They were all pretty much the same amp. 6.5 and 8 inch uniplane. Hmm. Could you zoom in? What do you want us to zoom in on, Franco? But, dude, I wish you would have, as you were saying that, just got your face as close to the camera as you could. <laughs> I was going out of focus, <laughs> so it wouldn't matter. <laughs> then, you could, then you could see that I didn't shave today. Yeah. Well, that's all I had on my list. Well, how are we, how we time wise, other than my watch <clears throat> telling me to stand up? We got nine minutes. We got nine minutes. So you guys oh, tell us go. in the chat, what did we miss? <clears throat> yeah, no problem. True voice. Sweet. What are some of the ones that we missed? I mean, I'm sure you guys know that we did miss some because Rob even thought of some along the way. I thought I got a whole lot of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Alpine, I guess what you you consider their new stuff True, that uh, just came out. Um, or all the F1 status stuff. Yeah, maybe. the F1 status because mm-hmm. it's, I mean, it's super unobtainium now because yeah. they like fly engineer out and you know, yeah, the SCX take you to dinner for five nights while they tune your car and stuff. <laughs> no kidding. The the XCS was really rare. Oh, uh, I yeah. mean, or a special edition at least, anyways. Yep. You had the XCS, didn't you? Didn't you have some of those amps? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I had, the, had the, the first gen fifty or whatever. Mm-hmm. The That's first the one had gen. the big fan in the middle. Kind of looks like a small twenty two fifty. Uh that Orion. No, the ones I, I had didn't have the fan. Oh, I was thinking of a different one. But they do kind of look like a twenty two fifty. Okay. Yeah, Slamology, we are planning next year, trying to make that work and not get other things planned yeah. in the way. Because I definitely want to go. Yeah, that'd be fun. But I'm gonna I'm warn sure. you now, here's what's gonna happen. If it's hot, me and D's gonna stroll around for about an hour. Kick it in the air. We're gonna find Scotty's uh yeah. R V. <laughs> we're gonna do mission. that. We're gonna do those lights about two different times and we're heading back to the Hizzy yeah. to the hotel. Take yeah. a little nap. That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, did you guys mention the UFO amp? No, we didn't, Andy. That's a good one too. The Area fifty one. Yeah. That one, um somebody actually bought that one a while back because I did post that one for sale. That was kind of one for me. You know, again, I don't, I've lost all desire to kind of keep and hoard things, which is good because it was a bad feeling, but stuff no, like that, didn't. it's just, I just want to show it off. Oh, no, no. he didn't. Bowling. Ryan, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> got us. He got I think him it's, for sure. I think it's rare to actually find one that works. Yeah. With the video, Jack RCA's. Yeah, <laughs> that is classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be on the. I'll be on with Big Jeff. Oh, tomorrow. sweet! That's tomorrow. Six thirty CST, I think. Okay. The seven thirty Eastern. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got to get back to them because they're still waiting on some information for me. But mine is in July sometime if I get back to them in enough time. So, but yeah, what I'll have to definitely check in. And see, do, do they do multiple people at, on one episode? Okay. Yeah, I think that's how he done it. So are you I've, both on there, or do? No, no, no. It's like one each. Okay. 
from what I've seen. Okay. I haven't seen them all, but I've seen I've uh, seen a few of them, and that's how they did. They had the one person, and they cut them out, and then you know drop them out and bring the new person in. Gotcha. Ryan, did you ever sell your amp dino? Because I know somebody was hitting me up pretty hard to get one, but I think that probably didn't ever fall through because anyway, it is what it is. But I know for a while that Tony wasn't making the dinos because I guess lack of some of the components that they needed to put them together. But also, honestly, I kind of think it's like one of these I mean, it's obviously build to order, but I don't think they make a ton of money on them. And I think they make a lot more on their diamond um, box and their SMD stuff. So, yeah, they're just going to work on, you know, what makes the most sense. It's kind of like me or Rob making a video on an old school amp. We like doing it. It's fun, but you just don't really get, you know, anything from it other than the excitement of making the video. Uh, let's see here. Soundstream, oh yeah, Soundstream. Yeah, that's another one we yeah. didn't do. So the DaVinci. Tarantula. Tarantula, there were several. That's a good good call out there. They made a, a, they made a special edition Rubicon one too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I've got, um, yes, and I keep forgetting that I have them, but I like paid way up for these several months ago. And I'm I'm losing my train of thought right now with which one it is, but it was supposedly a super limited edition one that they only made just a few of, and it was a sound quality uh, amplifier, and it was a Rubicon, but it had the um, the chrome or polished aluminum finish. And I'm trying to remember, it's uh, the Renoir. So some people call yeah. it the Renoir, but the way you pronounce his name is Renoir. He was a artist or painter or something anyway <clears throat> i've got one of those and i need to show that off so i can sell it so somebody can pay me ridiculous money to get one and there the there was an amp like that uh dude yes, i can't was. remember it it was like a flea market amp it was and we tried to once we found out about it we tried to find one and we could never find one some guy posted yeah. a video on youtube or something that showed it but I'm not sure if it was like true. Oh, I'm was sure just, it wasn't. I'm no, sure I mean, if, it was, it if it was just voltage instead of, yeah. you know, being the, yeah. the, the voltage plus the. It probably had like a clamp on it, you know, so you could, it's not doing power factor and all that. Yeah, that's stuff, what but, I meant. It doesn't have the yeah. power factor. So it's not true. Um, yeah. True Watts. Watts. The human rain. Yeah. That's the one with the dude like. Oh. Yeah. Somebody's that's gonna freeze that maybe the ugliest the refrigerator. Ugliest amp. Of all time, maybe. I, I mean, they were just even. It now, was cool though. I mean, it was people cool. People but... ridiculous money for those things. Yeah. It's like those Soundstream was junk at that time. I yeah. mean, junk. I mean, like Soundstream, in my opinion, really only had like a small amount of time where they were super high quality. It's like the Nelson Pass, yes, d design eras, yep. and then the rest of them. Some Rubicons were pretty solid, but I wouldn't consider them like class leading amps. Yeah, I, I love the sound stream up until like ninety six. And then after that when they had the dot twos and the stuff like that, yeah. They started having all kind of issues with them. And then beyond that, the Rubicons, a lot of those had issues. I don't but yeah, the earlier ones like the reference five hundred, the class mm -hmm. A uh, all the M C theory stuff. MCs, yeah, those mm -hmm. were those were drool worthy. That's what everybody wanted. Uh, Earthquake 10K ant with glitter on logo. I don't remember that one. The Little Wonder. I saw that, my Little Wonder. Dude, that Little Wonder had so much hype back in the day <laughs> with the ads. I mean, that was genius. The marketing campaign on that, that was genius. Yeah, it took a while to find one of those, too. Um, a true one, because I think they've come out with one recently they call it Little Wonder. Also, and it's kind of like when you do the search, it really just messes up your whole search because all you find is that new version. Yeah. But yeah, it, if you don't know what it truly does, we now have the, the two <laughs> numbers. What was it? Was like 200 watts I think or it was something? 50 watts by two ish. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. 70 watts by two and like 140 bridged. Yeah. Something yeah, that makes like sense. That. Pretty, it's pretty interesting. But yeah, you're right. It was definitely one of those teaser. Um, you know, ads, it's like, oh, yeah, we got all the power that you need. And, mm -hmm. you know, and people are like, what, what does it really do? Is it is it really that good? I guess I'm going to have to get one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was didn't, genius. Didn't work for me. Well, and then you have you have amps like low production amps like Zuki was one of them. Lunar mm-hmm. in its in its own right was a low production amp. Just ones you don't see often. And then I wonder how many house brands out there like this Z stat that we didn't know about. There's probably there's got to be plenty. Yeah, but there's a lot of dealers that are doing that because you know you can you can pretty much go online and you can. Oh, matter of fact, one of my one of the very few local shops around here just had some amps made. I need to contact them because I want to buy one just to have it. It's like local here, oh. so I, I I feel like I have to have one. So, is it like a Team Power or is it like an Alibaba? I I don't know. It, oh. It's one of them for sure. It, it's not. I mean, they're not designing the amp, but <laughs> I think they said maybe it's a Korean board. Oh, okay. I don't know. I seen the post the other day, so. I don't know. I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna pick one up. Rob, you need to start testing stuff. Or your your room's gonna be piled up again. You have Dude, to... like you guys can't see it right now, but there is stuff everywhere around there. I can't buy anything else to test until I start running through some of this stuff. Cut it off. Get rid of it. Yeah. The Mark was it Mark Anthony or Mark Antony? I thought it was Antony. A N T O N Y. Or maybe it. Does anybody know for sure? Those were, I think, like early 2000s, if I remember right. So I didn't know anything I about remember those them, when but... people started mentioning them. But I had an opportunity to get one a couple of times, and it does the same thing. Audio, Audio yeah, Ace. definitely heard of Audio Ace. Yeah, Me too. Yeah, but hey, you can do what you want to do, right? Why not? To make it special. Yeah. Fulltron. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love Memphis was great. I loved Fultron too. I had mm-hmm. plenty of Fultron stuff because they were honestly at that time Fultron was like flea market stuff. Well, but the, it was pretty first, decent quality. The first Bell was actually a Fultron. It was a Fultron, yep. Yeah. The big mm-hmm. That's big, big, the way I heard it. That's what brought the name change on was it was the Fultron Memphis Bell. Ah. Uh, and then they after that at some point they decided to just be Memphis. Yep. Hmm. I could be wrong, but that's the way I heard it. No, that makes sense. All right. Well, I think we have done our hours worth of blah, blah, blah. We've talked about some cool limited edition, special edition, whatever you want to call it, amplifiers. Had some interaction with the chat. We've been hanging out, having a good time. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll come back on another show sometime. We do have a topic I think we may need to get a couple more people on here with us, but I think we need to discuss it because it's been kind of discussed in the dark back alleys between some of us YouTubers. And I think it'd be a good show for you guys to hear as consumers too um, about some of the concerns we have for, um, you know, just showing products and making videos and stuff like that. I think it's, I think it's good for everybody to hear. And I think it's something we should do in the future. So uh, maybe we'll get that, that done not anything else first what you think rob yeah let's do it let's do it all right well thank you guys for checking us out we appreciate it more to come next time we out